Hello, my name is Darren Daly, and welcome to episode 15 of the Basketball Soapbox. In this one, I'll be going over DeAndre and staying with the Suns, Donovan Mitchell possibly going to the Knicks, and a little Celtics summer league, maybe even some Nets talk. Um, but let's get into it. Um, DeAndre and signed an offer sheet from the Indiana Pacers for four years, $133 million. And everyone's thinking, myself included, and I'm like, him and Tyrus Halliburton on paper is a nice duo. Halliburton's an emerging guard in the league. Um, very talented, very high IQ passer. He's able to shoot the ball. Um, they moved Brogdon out of, of Indiana to Boston to give Tyrus Halliburton the keys to that as the, the leading point guard. Bringing in DeAndre Ayton, who's a young big man who can play pick and pop, pick and roll, uh, finish at the rim, solid defensively. You think that's a good pairing? Well, that didn't happen. Uh, the Phoenix Suns didn't waste even, I think, even an hour to match it. Um, bringing him back, which I think is a smart move for Phoenix. You don't want to lose DeAndre Ayton for absolutely nothing. You don't want to do that, possibly, if he, if he is going to be traded down the line or whatever the case may be. Bringing him back on a four-year, $133 million deal is better than what he wanted in November, which he wanted, I believe, a five-year, $172 million deal. So you're saving a ton of money there, over $30 million to just let him see what he can get on the free agent market, and he got significantly less than what he wanted in November. So that worked out for Phoenix. Um, it was the largest offer sheet in NBA history. I believe the last one was Otto Porter from the Brooklyn Nets uh, when he was with the Wizards, and the Wizards matched that, which I think was a dumb move um, at that time. But... Um, moving on, um, the Suns matched it right away. Um, Aiton in the deal has a, a, a automatic veto for a year, so he can't be traded um, without his say so for a year at least. So that's most likely next off season. Um, he can be traded on January fifteenth. That's when uh, when you can trade players that you recently signed. It's going to be interesting to see how that works if he agrees to go anywhere or facilitate a trade out of Phoenix. Still. Um, I think he should stay in Phoenix. I think Phoenix should want him in Phoenix. Um, in the league, it's very hard to find a, a big man that's talented like that. I know a lot of the game is pr predicated on big men who can rim run, get to the rim, dunk, finish, block shots, and rebound. He has a little element of that, but a little bit more finesse to his game. And I think that pays dividends for Phoenix. Um, but first, most importantly, he's going to have to repair that uh, relationship with Monty Williams. Or Monty Williams is going to have to re re repair it with him. Um, the Suns organization is going to have to repair it their relationship with DeAndre, in my opinion. Um, it didn't end well in Game 7. There was also obviously a blow-up between him and Monty Williams on the bench there. Um, that didn't sit right with anyone involved, I don't think. Um, so they're going to have to repair that and try to navigate that because that's not easy. It was on national TV. Kind of reminds you of Chuck Daly and, and Adrian Daly, maybe not to that extent, maybe a little bit more uh, subdued in this in that exchange there. But just thinking about coaches and players blow up, uh, to see that happen on national TV in a blowout, something obviously was going on. Maybe tempers were raising high. Uh, Monty Williams didn't speak on it. We haven't heard much detail from that. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that relationship between the Phoenix Suns and Monty Williams and DeAndre and it goes um, how they're able to get back on track because DeAndre and you want a big guy like that that can pick and pop pick and roll and shoot he has a little mid-range he can stretch it out to the three so I, I think Phoenix has to change their philosophy a little bit there especially with Chris Paul aging uh, Devin Booker signing that max extension uh, just last week I believe um, for $224 million. So they're going to have to really think about how they're going to use DeAndre in going forward. I think they should try to uh, post him up more, use him more, uh, get his usage rate up. And and, and I know people are going to say, uh, I think there was a stat out there saying 70% of his shots are assisted. He's a big man who <laughs> rolls and finishes and pops uh, for mid-range shots. So I don't think that's a negative in that site. Point guards, guards, Playmakers in the league are going to handle the ball and create for the big men in this league. Unless you're a dominant big guy like Joker or Embiid or even when I say Cat on the perimeter there, you, most of your points are going to be assisted in this league from a, from a guard or a playmaking player. So I don't think that's a negative on DeAndre, DeAndre in saying that he can't create his own shot. I think Phoenix has to figure out ways to keep him motivated and keep him involved in games, especially on the offensive end, because he's a big man in this league. And if you got mismatches on you, you have to exploit that. You can't have a, a, a Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert uh, exchange where you're not passing him the ball now because the trust is not there or whatever the case may be. Um, CP3 is going to have to take a step back. That's the honest opinion of this Phoenix Suns team. In order for this team to make it to the next level, 
and be a perennial contender, a uh, possible champion, they're going to have to rely on Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton and Miles Bridges to a certain extent. Cam Johnson's on that team as, as, as another guy. Um, they still have Jay Crowder. So they have to figure out ways to get these other guys to bump up their scoring, be a little bit more uh, aggressive on the offensive end. And that's going to be Chris Paul relinquishing some power there. I know he's made his career on being a pure point guard, being one of the best point guards of all time. But in order to take that next leap, he's going to have to depend on Devin Booker and DeAndre. That's just going to have to be the move, especially for Phoenix. And it's going to be weird because Robert Sarver, the owner of the Suns, has been relatively cheap. We've seen this over the course of the years there. Um, after the 2010s with the Mars Stoudemire and Steve Nash, he really just gutted the team. Um all the way back to Joe Johnson, I think it was 06 when he signed to Atlanta uh, for, for a million dollars and they had a championship caliber roster and all they needed was Joe Johnson to come back and they let him go. So we've seen the Phoenix Suns be uh, uh, frivolous with their money and penny penny counting and, and, and watching how they spend money and used to blowing up teams um, in their history. So this is that won't be a surprise to see DeAndre Ayton traded or moved. Uh, it's just depending on what the relationship between the organization and DeAndre Ayton is. Obviously, they brought him back at a lower deal. They played that game. I've seen it a couple years ago. I don't. I can't remember too many times this happening, but I remember Marcus Smart a couple years ago before he signed his last contract. Um, the Celtics were like, hey, see what you can get on the open market. And especially this year, especially just being a bad year, honestly, for teams with cap space um, and the ability to push the button of the Phoenix Suns to a point where they didn't want to, because we've seen that in the past, I believe. Uh, well, that was an unrestricted free agency. I believe Mono Ginobili was in Philly, offered him like $15 million a year <laughs> to come to come play in Philly. I think when, I think Brett Brown took over at that time, um, but the, 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 the Spurs matched it, maybe at a number they didn't want to pay, but in order to keep their core and their players together, that's what they did. So to see Phoenix match, it wasn't surprising. Um, but to see them not try to orchestrate a sign and trade, uh, that would definitely be something that looked at. Um, Kevin Durant wanted to go to Phoenix. I believe his top destination was Phoenix. They were talking about that. So that's going to be interesting to see how that goes down because it does, definitely makes it more difficult with the salary bump that DeAndre Ayton has gotten um, from the Phoenix Suns in this um, free agent deal. So that's going to be interesting to see how that goes forward. But I think the Suns should try to figure out a way to build around Booker and Aiden. These are two young guys who are capable. You've seen them in the finals. You've seen them play extensively in the in the playoffs. And last year shouldn't be a barometer how we look at uh, Devin Booker and DeAndre Aiden, in my opinion. I think that was just a bad matchup series, and especially with Chris Paul being hampered. Um and them just getting blown out like that in Game 7, it looked bad. But you can repair that, I think. And I think it just has to be a change in philosophy and getting the ball back to Booker and DeAndre Ayton in the post. I think you have to use those guys and ride those guys all the way through the playoffs. And Chris Paul's going to have to chip in and basically be a facilitating point guard and try to just be healthy for the playoffs because that's the most important thing. We've seen him break down year in, year out. He got to the finals but was a little uh, hobbled there. Um, but we'll see how that goes for them. Um, but DeAndre Ayton staying in Phoenix, I think it's a good move for both sides. I think they should try to figure that out and repair that and continue to build this. You have Miles Bridges, you have Cam Johnson, you have a bunch of young guys on the roster who are capable, more than capable. Miles Bridges is a, a great defender. Uh, Cam Johnson, a good three-point shooter, long, lengthy on the defensive end. So there's some avenues here where this can be repaired, and I think Phoenix should try to do all they can to motivate DeAndre Ayton into the next caliber player of being an all-star or a uh, a potential all-star on that level of player for the Phoenix Suns. I think that will be good for the Phoenix going forward. Um, And we'll see how that goes.